Australia was once a world leader in terms of representation of women in politics. However, a lot has changed since then. The last few years have exposed a culture of sexism and misogyny in our country's halls of power. This all kind of started with Grace Tame, uh, who was our former Australian of the Year. She came forward with a really powerful speech when she was accepting her award, speaking about her experience as being a survivor of sexual assault and trauma. A few weeks after that, we had a former staffer called Brittany Higgins come forward with allegations of being raped in Parliament House. And what happened from there was a huge influx of women coming forward with their own stories of being assaulted and raped and experiences of sexism and misogyny. I personally have spoken to two women who formerly worked in Parliament and both of them had their own stories. Natasha Stott Despoia, she told me of a story about how on her first day someone came from her local town and they wrote a newspaper article based on what she was wearing. She said that not a day went by when a, a male colleague wouldn't comment on how the way her legs looked or what she was wearing, how she looked that day. So this has been an issue for quite some time and it seems that it's really come to a head over these last few years. And now it's becoming a political headache for Prime Minister Scott Morrison as he scrambles to hold on to power during the upcoming federal election. As Scott Morrison's centre-right government scrambles to prove itself to female voters, it also must come face to face with an influx of female independent candidates that are running in traditional liberal strongholds. Look, I think that women are considering really carefully who they're voting for this election and, and I think, you know, they are looking very carefully at major parties and independents. I'm starting to see a bit of an interest, almost a bidding war for lack of a better term, on women's particular uh, policies that affect women, such as the prevention of violence against women and children, the issue of childcare, hopefully early education, hopefully paid parental leave. So you'll see that they will have a policy role. So some analysts and experts are actually saying that it might be a hung parliament and neither of the major political parties might be able to gain that majority seat. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see. It's still very uncertain who's going to win the upcoming federal election. One thing feels for certain, women are going to continue to call for change regardless of who ends up in power.